business is that sometimes got themselves into trouble and got themselves into trouble because they came from abroad, countries like India, and when they got to the UK, they faced a, a great deal of difficulties. So I was one of those people that helped those nurses out. I'm elected in Birmingham as um, city council uh, in a ward called Oliad. It's in an area called Answorth, for those of you that have got relatives in the UK. It is absolutely a very diverse ward. So it is a large, large minority groups live in that area. But I also have a city brief. And my brief for the city, I hold the portfolio for adult social care and health also for public health. We cover a city, it has a population of 1.1 million people, but we have about another 100,000 that are not registered anywhere. So they're in the city illegally. They tell me that my brief is the largest portfolio in Western Europe, but I'm not sure. So if I'm wrong, forgive me, but that's what I've always been told. I'd like to start by mentioning a few highlights from the visits I had yesterday because they were absolutely fascinating. The passion of Dr. Sabine and her team, it was absolutely infectious and I'd like to thank them for everything they did for us yesterday and I know they'll do for the rest of the week. I learned a great deal from our visits and discussions with the Food and Drug Administration Agency. Many of the things that are being done in that particular area were things that in the UK we did many years ago. But what we did, because of financial restraints and new ways of looking at things, we moved away from it, which I absolutely, absolutely feel was a mistake and yesterday showed me just how much of a mistake that was. An example is of the fortification that was done um, within the food over in this country. In the UK, we used to do quite a lot of fortification, but again, it is now very limited what we do. And although I, you would think I was very healthy, which I am, I have no major health issues, I am a lifelong sufferer of deficiency with vitamin D. I am on medication, and now they're saying in the UK that whether you're from overseas or whether you're living in the UK, that everybody should be given extra vitamin D. Now, perhaps if we had fortified our, our food earlier on, I wouldn't be a life sufferer, and also my children wouldn't live with that deficiency, even though I would say I'm not from the poorest sector families in the, the city. But what I want to mention, which I found absolutely, oh, I loved it, was the visit I made to the lighthouse. It was a fantastic visit. It showed me why this Poon Birmingham City Partnership uh, on smart nutrition is so important. The young people at this project, they were absolutely inspirational. Even through their adversity, they still had aspirations. And the staff, the corporation here, and the investors have brought into this, and they're supporting them. It was humbling to hear the stories and, and what they'd actually been through, what they had fought against but what, they, what their aspirations were. And they hadn't given up, even though many of them had had very, very difficult starts in life. Can I say that for this project to grow and work, we all have to work together, both the partners in Poon and us in the UK. I would like to see partners come together with a common vision to see not only this generation, but the next generation have a better start in life to avoid the stunting growth from lack of nutrition and impending obesity issues, which is a crisis in the UK that, are, that is developing from people making poor dietary choices. Finally, in Birmingham, we will be hosting the Commonwealth Games in July 2022. I know the leader of Birmingham 
Ian Ward is very keen to ensure we leave a legacy after these games. What a great legacy it would be if through the smart city work, through the work with Poon and Birmingham, the nutritional project, that we could work together to develop joint strategies to increase our nutritional intake. Because in Birmingham, we've got this thing about, we've got to exercise, we've got to exercise. But if your diet isn't right to start with, it doesn't matter how much exercise you do, you will not get the result that we want. And we have to start from the basis. And Adrian summed that up so well. It's not just about your mother, it's about your grandmother. And if you look, many of the women in this room and men, if you look at what conditions your mothers had and your grandmothers had, many of us now coming through are having the same conditions. And it's because we have to look at what happened with our grandparents. So it's an absolutely brilliant point that Adrian made at that point. Now to just finish, We need to reduce the low quality food that we are eating leading to stunt growth and obesity crisis with our citizen. Long term leading to health and even poor life experiences. Let us work together. Let us be big. Let us be absolutely wanting to make a change. Let us think out of the box. We can move mountains to ensure that the future life chances of our citizens are increased. Let us make a difference. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hamilton, to sh uh, for your inspirational words. Now I request Dr.